I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. can't believe it. I just can't believe this. I can't believe in this day and age we'd get this piece of decent, fun, fast-paced, actually fairly good Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. <sighs> this was a decent movie. I liked it. Especially compared to the stuff that has come out in the past two months. Doolittle, The Grudge, Birds of Prey. Might as well be playing with jars of clay. I like Bad Boys for Life. And then this movie. And because this film has its issues. It's not a 10 out of 10. Fantastic. I do wish it was more in the world Sonic's actual world and not Earth. Like Masters of the Universe from back in the day with He-Man coming to Earth and all, you know, when you have the Smurfs coming to Earth. They do that a lot because it saves on budget. The plot's nothing to run home about. Typical. But it was fun because the cast there did their jobs well it had charm to it and the biggest part the biggest part it had heart to it this movie had a good heart on its shoulder and you just say it was use the word cheesy you just say the word corny but you know what that type of stuff can go a long way compared to a lot of family films and a lot of other type of films in this day and age. Not even just family films, but this type of film day and age. I could tell that despite the plot being on Earth, the director was a fan. Jeff Fowler. From not only that terrible trailer because of the stupid song choice and why would you have that puke inducing design and this is the first film this guy has directed he's a visual fetz artist he did some short anime film that was nominated for an academy award This is the first fully length feature film. And you know what? He didn't do that bad of a job. Because again, this film had a heart to it. Sonic's design. 
much better than that first garbage trailer. The test. Jim Terry, he didn't give me a lot of laugh out loud moments. But man, I thought he was so much better here than in the past couple stuff I've done him. I've done him. I've seen him done. I think this is miles better than Dumb and Dumber 2. Dumb and Dumber 2, I was embarrassed for Jim Terry here. He got a few chuckles out of me. Again, I'm not going to say it's the return. It's not like Eddie Murphy and Dolomite's my name. Oh my God, Eddie Murphy's back. But Jim Terry had that energy and looked like he cared. But also, it wasn't 100% muddy. And it, there was times where he was trying to be serious as well. Because if he was trying to mud 24-7, it might get on your nerves. He doesn't do that either. Again, might not have been plentiful laugh out loud moments, but it felt like he he cared. Weirdly enough. Ben Schwartz is the voice of Sonic. I am impressed that Sonic was the star of his own movie. And you may say that's the dumbest praise ever, but considering Transformers movies and Ninja Turtle films, uh-huh. They both had someone called Michael Bay attached them. Or even like the Smurfs, which that was a film I tried to give credit to because it's a kid's film. Uh, let me give easy on it. No, that's a bad kid's film. I think long ago I reviewed it when I came out. Like, it's a kid's film. Should I really get mad on it? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I took that review down <clears throat> ages ago. Just like, yes. It is stupid. Just because it's a kid's film doesn't mean you should be a bad piece of crap. The 1990 Ninja Turtles film is a kid's film, you could say. But it's a, I think it's a damn good movie plentiful other ones and this had a very fast pace dare I say almost too fast it's it it tells me something that I did not want the movie to end and I wanted another 20 minutes and I don't know if it'll get a sequel but I would like to see one because I like the Sonic character some people were annoyed by him in the movie I was not this, this damn movie, this damn movie, like, secretly knew I was watching this. And the couple people that told me to watch this, I won, maybe, maybe not, but they reference Mel Yellow in this movie. Sonic drinks Mel Yellow. Because they're at a bar, and James Martin says, give him a Mel Yellow. And then near the end, when they're looking at his room, there's a can of Mellow Yellow. I've drank that drink. It's my all-time favorite drink of all time. It's even in the intro of this video. I'm like, you some bitch. Some bitch. In a weird way, I know this sounds stupid. I almost want to say this is a better version of Howard the Duck. The 80s movie. Which doesn't make sense because there's no rock band. There is no romance or anything. So I, I know it doesn't make sense. But it's just you have a character that goes from their world into our world. And then a little bit of a road trip. And then you have this villain that becomes crazy. I guess the dumbest comparison. I don't know why it entered my brain. But maybe because that's a film I thought his tone was all over the place. But here I thought the tone was consistent. I mean, even the beginning of the film, where it shows a bit of Sonic's world. I wish there was more of that. That's one of my few you know, nitpicks. I wish there was more of that world. And I played some of the Sonic games back in the day. I can't say oh, I'm a hardcore fan, only the fact that I haven't played much of them. Because growing up, I had Nintendo, Super Nintendo. My cousin had a Genesis, and I played Sonic the Hedgehog a little bit. I remember liking the character, the idea of the character, the look of the character. I've seen throughout the years bits on YouTube and playthroughs. They seem like fun games, except Sonic 2006, which seems like a horrible game based on camera work and controls. And Sonic wants to fuck some human chick. 
I'm like, he's got good taste because she's hot. So go for it, man. Don't go too fast. That's some men's problem. But James Marsden, the other cast, James Marsden wasn't that bad. James Marsden was actually fairly decent. And I thought he actually worked well with the Sonic character. Sonic was actually the star of the movie. It wasn't like, oh, we got 20 minutes. There's no Sonic. No, it starts with him. It ends with him. He's there throughout the entire movie. He is the star of the film. The the music. Some song choices. Like they have Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. Which reminded me of the scene of Hardcore Henry. Don't stop me now. I'm like, well, why the hell didn't you use that for the trailer? Your first trailer. It's having such a good time. I'm having a good time. Don't stop me now. It's not the movie's fault. It's more the marketing's fault. If you see the trailers, you kind of have seen the whole movie. I mean, there's a couple bits like, oh, cool. Especially moments that remind me of... If... It, if Anyone remembers those later X-Men films, the character Quicksilver, when he would go and slow-mo, and those were like some pretty cool visual effect-driven sequences of films I didn't like. I didn't like those X-Men films, but the Quicksilver moments were fun to watch. I thought that was a, the right choice to implement some of those type of scenes in this movie. Um, yeah, I thought Sonic was an intro was a good character. I had fun with his character. I liked that. Well, maybe when I get more into spoilers, I'll talk about that. But even as a guy who didn't follow the games too much, but I remember liking some of them, I recognized certain stuff, the mid credits. And you know, if you stay through the credits, there's a nice surprise, which would be nice to see for the sequel. Even the way it begins, I mean, the Paramount logo with the rings and the Sega intro where you have like different screens of other video games. I'm like, is this a Sega universe? I wish. If it's going to be movies like this, sure. And moments like when... When he's ready to do one of his Quicksilver things at the end of the film and he's tapping his foot. That's kind of like in the game when you're waiting long enough and Sonic's like tapping his foot like that. Uh, near the end, there's a little piano version of the Sonic thing. Like, da, 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 da. I wish they had used that more throughout the movie. Like maybe certain orchestral or musical versions of that theme. Especially during the action sequences. I think that would have been... I, I do see there's some opportunities I will light. Not have a lot of it given away in the trailer. Have more on Sonic's world. Have a bit more usage of his powers. How do I put it? What else? Uh, there's one fart joke. Did not need to be in there. Could have been easily cut out. Thankfully, though, there wasn't much of that stupid humor of that type. And it was because he ate the chili dog, which, you know, he's a... That, if you watch some of the cartoons, he did eat chili dogs. But still, you didn't need a fart joke. So, again, there are flaws. You know, typical story you've seen plenty of times. He didn't need to go to Earth and all this stuff. Could have just been in, entirely in his world. Like I said... I would have liked a bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes more running time, maybe one or two more action scenes throughout it. Like little stuff of that nature. But yeah, with that said, the fact that there's a little bit of stakes involved, a little bit of danger to Sonic's character, especially from the beginning of the film. It had a heart to it, had a charm to it. There's a little bit of arc for Sonic's character, at least something that he wanted. It wasn't just... Sometimes they do absolutely nothing. They actually did a little bit of something with that. The elements that I do appreciate. 
I mean, then more in the spoilers starting now. Uh, the idea of having a baby Sonic that that, that was kind of neat, showing the whole world and doing the loop de loops and like stuff that was in the game that was neat. This owl, I don't know what the owl comes from. I don't know if that's part of the games or anything of the sort. I don't know. But then these other characters chase after them and the fucking owl gets shot through the fucking chest. Like, I mean, and she's dying, gets him out of there and he wants to go back, but then she stays behind probably to her death. I'm like, wow, okay. Didn't expect that, but that's pretty neat. And then some time passes so he knows the world and I, I get it. I liked the the best part of the film is the Sonic character, which is what it should be. And showing bits of her per, of his personality. Like he likes to save animals. Which I was a nice nod. Now that I think of it, because in the first game, probably the all, all the older games, he would hit something to save the animals. Because there'd be animals in those things you kill. Because you bop them, they explode, and then animals steer away. Where there's a turtle on the road, he saves it. And then he takes it on a journey. He's like, oh man, it must suck. He doesn't say suck, but oh, it must suck that you're so slow. So he takes the turtle on a ride while that Queen song's playing. Like, I thought that was a fun moment. I'm like, okay, I I'm kind of enjoying the, the vibe you're, you're giving here. Another fun moment, does he, the small town, he watches people because he's, you get the idea the character's lonely and he wishes he had a friend or a family, but he's been lonely for all these years. He's got this cave with all this cool stuff and a bunch of Flash comic books, but he's very lonely. But he'll sneak in and watch like James Marsden and his girlfriend watching Speed with Tiana Reeves. Yes, watching Speed with Tiana Reeves. And Sonic says something nice about Tiana and says, pop quiz, hot shot. I mean, I'm like, the movie hit the right buzz for me. He's watching Speed. He's a Tiana Reeves fan. He lights Mill Yellow. I'm like... You're hitting the spots for me, movie. Okay. I get you, man. There's even more where he's like his own therapist. He's jumping back and forth. Same with the, the baseball field, of course, you saw in the trailer. And yeah, I wish a lot of it wasn't even way in the trailer. Or I just, I wanted more of the movie. No, I'm nice. No one would want a two-hour version of this movie. I would though. That's how much I was enjoying the interaction with Sonic in the world and using his speed and the character. I would have liked a two hour version of this. It's funny, like, for what I hear, there's a two hour version of Fantasy Island, the horror film, but this very brisk uh, running time. That's why I hope there is a sequel. I really do. And, you know, just stem a little bit of the nitpicks. Incorporate maybe some of the music more into the score, orchestral or rock version or something. Uh, don't have it just take place in the real world. A little bit more into the fantastical worlds, which is what people think when they think of Sonic. And there was only one fart joke thing, but have zero. And then some of the the rough edges just smooth them out, and uh, you'd have it even more improved part two I mean but I don't know I mean for all I know the film will bomb or it'll be a box office disappointment or whatever and they won't do it or they'll do it and they screw it up I don't know and yeah I, Jim Carrey like I said uh, there were a few moments that made me chuckle like when he's talking to James Marsden and they're having a conversation Marsden's well I was breastfed and then Jim Carrey goes, oh, nice. Rub that in my orphan face. I didn't see that line coming. The way he delivers so serious, just baby chuckle. I mean, yeah, Jim Carrey had that bit of energy to him. It was kind of nice to see that energy again. And there's fun moments with Sonic. Like, okay, well, where do I need to go? go west he goes west comes back and you realize he just kept going ran into the water and came back he's like i'm wet salt water steams i got 
And that was just handled uh, you know, fairly well. And you have like a Quicksilver type of scene in a bar, which was fun. Uh, you know, they fight the robots on the road. But I guess it's not the movie's fault. It's the marketing's fault. They gave away a good chunk of this movie in the trailer. I think they were just desperate that someone see the movie. And I, that's the marketing team's fault. Marketing team, they, you guys, whoever does these trailers, any trailers nowadays, you need to stop the shit. It's to the point that I don't even want to watch any fucking trailers anymore. Because that can ruin the enjoyment out of stuff. Like, you watch a trailer, and then they show the entire movie, and then you watch it, and you don't get probably the visceral reaction that you would have if you didn't know anything about it. And you're kind of robbed by it. And that's why I'm like, I might just at this point never see a fucking trailer again. Because it's get to a point where I'm sick of them doing that shit because they don't learn. Again, that's not the movie's fault. That's the marketing's fault. But I mean, it's gone 20 minutes. I'm not going to give every single thing away. Uh, the end credit scene with uh, another character's arrival. Interesting to see that character be a part of the sequel. I'd be interested to see what they would do with that. Not to give it away, but you probably already know. I guarantee it's already been uploaded on YouTube. I guarantee it. Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog was a surprisingly decent flick with some chuckles, a great design by Sonic. I give props to Paramount. And you know me, if you know me, you know I hate Paramount because I hate them producing those shitty Ninja Turtle films from 2014, 2016, which I call Super Chuds and producing those stupid fucking Transformers movies and not having good films on Blu-ray plentiful amount of them so it's it pains me to praise paramount but i gotta be fucking fair and you know what the director it may not be an a plus movie but man it's a easily one of the best films i've seen this year and that's strange to say and i'm not even a gay i'm not even a gay i'm happy so i am gay for those who don't know gay usually meant to be a happy term but that was a different term. I meant to say I'm a guy. Well, I'm a gay. I'm a guy who's gay for this movie. Not that that's bad. I'm also a guy that did not hate a tremendous amount of video game movies. I like the Super Mario Bros. movie for what it is. I like it. I do. I like Doom with Carl Urban and The Rock. It's not the definitive Doom movie, but I like aspects of it. I liked Mortal Kombat, 1995, really enjoy that one. A lot of them though, Double Dragon sucked, Street Fighter sucked, Street Fighter Legend of Kung Lee sucked, Double Dragon sucked. I liked the first Lara Croft Tomb Raider, the sequel sucked, the reboot sucked, Prince Persia sucked, so there's a lot that sucked as well, including anything with Uwe Boll. By the way, Nice Easter eggs for fans of the game, fast pace, a charm, fun vibe to it. Nice nods to speed and milli yellow and things of that nature. Overall, yeah, I, I gotta say I liked the film. I was impressed by the film. I think it's a good time. You sit down, you have worries. Just enjoy 80, 90 minute fun family flick to get a little bit of a smile. And I know I'm repeating myself, but the end of here, kudos for having a, at least a heart to it. There's a good heart to the movie. And again, it may be deemed cheesy or corny, but you know what? Sometimes that's all it takes. At least for me. So anyway, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog, go figure. And now I'm wondering, I try to do a little fake out at the beginning and I fail, but I wonder how many people would be like, oh, he hates the movie, and just not even bother watching past like 10 seconds of the review. Yeah. Thank you, take care. 
And yeah, I would definitely uh, recommend the movie. Nice surprise. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.